evening all evening all um i need to pull up the tab that had all the stuff in it because tonight is motivation monday um let's put that over there because i've you've got a whole bunch of stuff i wanted to read and look at um tonight is motivation monday and so i thought i'd take the opportunity being being the group leader to do some leadership and to talk about covid19 um coronavirus I think it's SARS-CoV-2 is the other word for it. Um, and to not address some of the stuff that is coming out around how we deal with it and what's going on, because there is a whole bunch of coverage around that going on already. Um, there, is a, there is a bunch of doctors on YouTube, a bunch of stuff on the BBC. Um, of course, WHO, the World Health Organization, have come out with a whole bunch of stuff as well. and. I am not medically qualified, so I don't have, um, I won't say I won't have a strong opinion, but I possibly don't have a valid opinion, although I, I probably do. But what I do know is that there is a whole bunch of, I think Stephen Colbert summed it up really well. It's like a balancing thing. On one hand, there is the thing that says, that we need to be sensible and that life has to go on and that stuff is going to happen. There is also the, the, the bunch of stuff around taking care, being cautious and generally what's called flatten the curve. And there are on this side, there is a whole bunch of opinion in the world that that varies from basically uh, Stephen Colbert described it as between a feather and a brick. And as in a light touch theory and a low touch theory. How much weight do you put on that? And I believe our UK government is taking the feather approach. Um, I'm not sure I 100% agree with it, but I can see why they've done it. It's basically a high risk, high reward scenario. But they haven't explained that very well at all. And I've done a whole bunch of research over the weekend I also know that the UK government's guidelines actually don't conform with the WHO guidelines um, around aggressive testing, um, social distancing, isolation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are not being as aggressive as WHO has advised us to be around that. Now, I also then know that a lot of people have then chosen to do some of the things themselves, regardless of what our government is telling us. And I think that is a good thing. I also think that people like me, who are basically healthy and ooh, I've got, what are that doing in the way, um, basically healthy, do not have anything up with my lungs at all. Um, and I'm under 70. I'm 49. Um, I'm probably going to catch it at some point. I'm probably going to have the thumping headache for about three days, have a cough, have a fever, and then I'm going to recover. And 80% of the population, that's going to be the scenario. That leaves 20% of the population that effectively us 80% then need to protect. This is where the I'm all right, Jack, um, school of thought clashes in my head with we all as a society have a duty of care to look after the people that are immunocompromised are old have a lung issue already and it's going to be rough for them it's going to be shit for them quite frankly um it's not going to be fun times and that whole um boris non-reassurance thing around, well, yeah, people are going to die. Well, being a very pragmatic person, people die anyway. And people are going to die regardless of whether we catch coronavirus, COVID-19 or not. Everybody dies. But you've also got the, the other thing of, well, yeah, I'd rather not die anytime soon, thank you. I would, personally, I've got shit to get done. I've got another book to get out. I've got people to serve. I've got the world to change. I know I personally don't need to die any time soon. But 
there's this whole balance to be had. So a couple of facts that I know about low carbing, not to be reassuring and not to say that you do not need to take personal care. But one of the things that being a low carb person does is I believe and there is anecdotal evidence and there, no, there are no scientific trials for this because no bugger will test it people that are low carb don't tend to get as sick as the general population there are a few things that govern that and basically sugar suppresses the immune system um, it's called your leukocytic index I spoke about that a long time ago but basically when you eat sugar your leukocytic index drops through the floor. And that is basically your immune system set up and get go for uh, like action. So people that have not got controlled blood glucose, which whether you have diabetes or not, because you eat a low carb diet, your blood glucose is generally controlled. Your, your leukocytic index is fighting fit. So your body is ready to deal with shit better, quite frankly. Um, there are various people in the group that I know that have said I haven't been sick in ages. I know personally I haven't got sick in a long time. Um, and I believe one of the reasons around that, no science behind that at all. It's just a personal belief backed up by the anecdotal evidence of what I see in the group and in other websites, etc., etc., that people that eat a low carbohydrate diet don't tend to get as sick as the general population that's not to say we don't get sick at all we do and when i get sick oh i, I get sick um but generally speaking things like the minor stuff things like colds i tend to brush those off in a day sore throats i personally have a really big tendency to get a sore throat whenever anything is run down whenever i've burnt the candle at both ends um first thing that i get is a sore throat um in my younger days, I would do that, get sore throat. I'd be out for three or four days. These days, I feel it. And that's also because I self-care. I go, hang on a minute. I need some good sleep. I need some good nutrition. And it goes away. That could be just because I'm self-caring. That could be because I'm eating low carb. I personally believe it's because it's a combination of the two. So I believe that as low carb people, our immune systems are better primed to cope. Now, that's not to say that we are not going to get sick. And the going out and getting sick actively, I think that's a very high risk strategy from the UK government. I can see the logic, but quite frankly, I think it's a bit insane. Um, on the one hand, I personally think that, well, yeah, I'm healthy and I'm fit and I'm strong and I have no kids. And I uh, but I do have a mum that is nigh on 70. She's 69. Um, me getting sick, me getting it over with and me potentially getting herd immunity. And that's the key here. Potentially. We don't actually know if catching COVID-19 then confers immunity on the person who then recovers we don't actually know that for sure yet i believe and i've not read anything on this that there are people who've got it for a second time in china i haven't read anything on that but that's what i've heard i need to go and do some more research on that so one of the things that that the uk strategy around well, people catch it they get sick they get better and then they are immune and can't catch it again so they become people that can't spread it. Theoretically, that's one of the things that should flatten the curve. I personally think that is a very high risk, high risk strategy. So for myself, and I am an introvert, you know, I'm an introvert. So I've been practicing for social distance my whole life. I fantastically love being at home and I fantastically love working at home. And so I know that for me, socialize social distancing is an easy thing making sure that i go to the shops off peak because there is the other thing around people are panic buying carbohydrates and toilet paper god knows why because it's not like you're going to get the chronic craps if you if you get covid19 um you're going to be sick for on the whole 
Um, if you are healthy, you are going to get sick for three days and then you will get better and you will then potentially be socially distancing, but you aren't going to not be able to go out. Um, so I think one of those things about panic buying is actually quite selfish of the population because especially loo roll, hand sanitizer, soap, um, I know my lo locally and flour. I don't know why we went out um, the weekend, me and my boyfriend, my boyfriend and I. He is not a low carb person. He likes making bread and everywhere I'd run out flour. Um, I'm guessing that lots of people are going to be baking stuff. Don't know. Um, but that whole thing around panic buying of carbohydrate staples, I can understand why people are doing that. But for us, it, it effectively gives us more more food on the shelves and that that does sound a little bit cynical um but one of the things that me way we that we may find happen is as people stay home there's going to be less delivery drivers that take like the bulk stuff around there's going to be less people working in slaughterhouses less people working in farms that do eggs and do milk dairy farmers um although it, there may or may not, but then the supply chain is going to have an issue. Now, for us, that may give us problems. So stocking our freezers is potentially a sensible idea, making bone broth, stuff that builds our immunity. Now, I'm going to look over here and see about um, what people have said. People that are in higher risk. I know there's a few people in the group that are higher risk. People like Andrea, people like Karen. Um, and they are the people I'm talking about we need to look after because this whole flattening the curve thing is about slowing infection. It's one of the things I can see about the UK's theory is that everybody's going to get it. So me and, and I can see that attitude. But the longer you personally delay catching the virus and bearing in mind also that there is also seasonal flu colds whatever that we all catch anyway and quite frankly the same principles apply um, of if you're going to catch a cold or a flu coronavirus is in that same sort of way of part being passed on it's passed on by aerosol droplets from people coughing um, whereas people who sneeze is colds and flus so it's not it's it's a similar vector of transmission, but it's not an identical virus at all. And so preventing like just being socially distant, being sensible and washing your hands. If you are not in the habit of washing your hands as soon as you get home, now is the time to start getting into that habit. Um so hand sanitizing gel only if it, it was only effective if it's above 60 percent and it's not it gives you almost a false sense of security because most hand sanitizers are anti actually are actually antibacterial corona virus is a virus um it's completely different so all alcohol does is basically allows you to make your hands less hospitable. It doesn't get rid of it and it doesn't kill it. It just makes your hands, makes them die faster. It, it, it's a vector of um, it's not kill on contact. It is basically your hands. The virus can only survive between five and ten because your hands are warm. Virus, The virus cannot survive above, I believe it's 28 degrees, which is, of course, colder than room te or warmer than room temperature but your hands of course should be 36 degrees or 30 because that's how the whole hot body heat is so of course your your the virus can't survive long on your nice warm hands so when you're rubbing your hands together you're generating heat and that itself is killing the virus and of course the alcohol is allowing your hands to be less hospitable but of course, soap and water, hot soapy water, you're talking that whole making the water 40 degrees it's dead um and the soap of course then washes the virions down the sink all is good um making sure that you are vigilant around keeping surfaces clean getting disinfectant wipes 
Um, and then the obvious ones, especially if you're in places like me, I live in London. I'm avoiding the tube like the plague. I'm dinging the bus bells with my elbow. Um, I'm pushing um, crossings with my elbow um, because, yes, my elbow it's over there. I'm very unlikely to touch my elbow and then touch my face. Um, that's your the, basically your transport vector is when you touch the virions onto your hands and within that 10 minute window, you then touch your face. Um, so one of the other things I know I'm personally doing is when I go out and about, I'm keeping my hands in my pockets as much as possible. So I'm preventing myself from touching my face while I'm out and about because I've got my hands in my pockets and making sure that I am as safe as I can be. I know I'm inevitably going to catch it. I live in London. There are now 13 people in my area that have it. And there was only one on Friday. Um, yes, yeah, so it's going to be what it is. So it is up to you about how you treat it. I personally say this is not an excuse to comfort eat because comfort eating is going to lower your immune system. Um, so building that mental resilience. And one of the things that I, I in, is in the Get Started Challenge is in my books, the keys of my, my practice with, with helping the world is about building that mental resilience, about um, using detached observer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So detached observer is your ability to know that you are not your thoughts. And yeah, that is a mind blowing thing. Most people don't realize that they are not their thoughts. Um, there is a concept in psychology called metacognition, which literally means thinking about thoughts. And we can think and analyze a what we think. So that whole I'm sad, bored, lonely, depressed, um, down, need comfort, um, all of those reasons that we then self-soothe with carbohydrate. Now is the time to really dig in. Now is the time to pull those thoughts out, look at them and go, does that thought serve me? Now, you're not going to then not eat the carbohydrate every time. But by putting that little break on the, I'm bored, I want to eat pretzels, which is something I'd never do. Pretzels aren't my thing. Um, but I'm bored. What is there? What is there for me to eat? And that normally question is, what junk is there for me to eat? What's that thought? Why is that driving you? Thinking. OK, so am I actually hungry right now or am I just bored? Am I just scared? Am I lonely? Am I whatever I am? Something emotional rather than hungry. Hungry is the physical body. Your body has needs. Your body needs energy. Your body needs sunlight. Your body needs water. Um, a whole bunch of lovely, gorgeous, sexy things your body needs. The emotions are, all come from here specifically they come from back here in your amygdala which are reacting to a past thing so in the in the in your past you will have got bored or lonely or depressed or whatever and then you associate a soothing activity with a carbohydrate of choice so it could be Werther's original sweets pretzels um sweets biscuits jammy dodgers digestive biscuits hobnobs you will have a chain of thing that associates I am X emotion, therefore Y carbohydrate food is the answer, simply. Fishing that pattern out when it appears, looking at it and going, that pattern's not gonna serve me right now. What can I do instead? Get a drink of water, go for a walk, eat some real food, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera building that mental resilience around knowing that that crap that, that comes from back here that makes you want to self-soothe, you don't have to listen to it. And you're not going to succeed in not listening to it every time. But every time you look at that pattern and go, that pattern is not serving me and choose to do something else, that pattern just loses its power power just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more it's never going to go away entirely 
but it becomes easier to ignore and go yeah no that's ju that's just what my my old brain is telling me to do let's do something else instead it becomes easier and easier and easier the more you actually look at the pattern and basically say no you're a bunch of bollocks mate i don't need that i need to do xyz instead so all of that i mean some of the people were saying in the thingy about they're concerned that their already increased risks are going to increase um, if they're forced to eat high carb junk. Quite frankly, I, I, I personally share those beliefs and I think that it's something we will have to face. Um, but then that's also about making every mouthful as optimal as you can. Um, if you can get hold of eggs and cheese, um, if meat becomes scarce, um, using vegetables to stretch stuff out. Um, and if we have to put some rice in there or we have to put some potato in there, we'll know that rice and potatoes, whilst they are carbohydrate, they're not wheat. They're not damaging our, our autoimmune response because, of course, wheat, I've spoken about wheat at length, about how it, it opens up our tight junction, sneaks through, and then our own immune system attacks it wheat and potatoes are just starch so our body will cope with those far more easily diabetics of course caveat that la 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 um so it, it, it's it's all about making that most it, tenant three in action being as optimal as we can given the circumstances we find ourselves in there is always a more optimal choice even if it is a non-optimal choice there are always things that we can do to balance how much harm we get to do to ourselves with the shitty choice we've got. Um, so, yeah, if it comes down to I need to eat a can of, of pea and ham soup that I know has got potato in it. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to make that choice because it's a priority to actually stay alive. And. I'm hoping that the government sorts out supply lines because we have to take a lot of this shit on faith. I'm hoping that the government sort out the supply line so that that doesn't become a problem. Because quite frankly, this is going to be with us now forever. Um, the predictions of at least the next six months will be a lot of social distancing. I personally think that society is going to change into a more online model. Um, of course, dystopian futures around Blade Runner and Carbon and all the all the vague dystopian future reference sci-fi that I read um, about the whole. A lot of people are almost certainly going to be doing gatherings on their phones. We're going to be FaceTiming, Zooming, Skyping more. We're going to be getting together online and things like Peloton. Um, which is a cycling thing that people get together every morning on a Peloton bike that's connected to the internet, that feeds a panel, and people exercise together but separately. That sort of model is going to increase. Um, that sort of disconnected connectedness, we already have it because of Facebook, because of social media. I think, for, for better or worse, society is going to go more that way. That also means that we need to take care of our older people because they don't understand about computery stuff on the whole. Some of them do. So, Silver surfers, fantastic people, but some of them don't. And we know that we have to assist, guide, help them to stay connected because there is a whole bunch of evidence, whole bunch of evidence around if you disconnect the older population, they have more problems. Um, they have worse health outcomes. They they just it's all bad for them if we socially disconnect them totally. So this whole idea about telling 70 year olds to stay indoors for four months, that's not actually a great idea for them at all, because it will give them a worse health outcome. Although cynical hat me, um, it, it may well be that someone in Whitehall's done the maths and gone, well, if this many people die and this many people need to be thinking how much money are we going to save versus how much we, there's there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that's gone on around that which is cynical and horrible but it's probably going to have, have happened um i don't agree that it's scaremongering but i do believe that 
hype is something we have to be aware of. It's about that being personally cautious stuff about flattening out that curve. Um, it's 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 an inevitability that we will catch COVID-19, I personally believe. When is the key? And preventing yourself from catching it is, I believe, the key to a successful resolution for this. South Korea is showing that amazingly. They are aggressively kept testing, isolating people, keeping them out, and they've managed to flatten out their curve quite nicely. Whereas places like Italy, they didn't. They've now got a massive amount of people, hospital overwhelm, and it's and they're, 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 they've started to put measures in. It's it's effectively too late for their health system. So I suspect our response is taking that responsible thing of do what you can to socially distance yourself would be my my thought on this. Please drop me if you think I'm talking utter shit and total bollocks. Please let me know with a comment. Um, or if I've helped you and if I've made you feel a bit better about this, let me know as well. Um, because I want to make sure that we're all OK, basically. And if on the grand scheme of one percent of the population die of this, well, there are 12,000 people in this group. So we can expect 120 people to die. That's a crap thing to think about in this group. And I, and I personally really not want that to happen. I don't want 120 of my group members to cark it, quite frankly, because that makes me feel very, very sad. But it's also a very realistic probability sum. So do what you can. Keep calm and wash your hands. Stay safe. Practice social distancing. Watch YouTube, the reputable people on YouTube. Um, Listen to the government, but then also make your own choices. As I say, I don't believe our government is quite going far enough. They've, they've gone for delay rather than contain. And I'm not sure that is the right choice. I know a lot of the events I'm going to recently are getting cancelled. I personally, get, I, I run a social gathering myself, not related to low carb. I've already cancelled April's one. I've had people in my Airbnb because I Airbnb my house out um, because the marathon's cancelled and events at the O2 have been cancelled. They've cancelled their Airbnb with me. That's 100 percent fine. Means I'm going to be interestingly short of money. But that's also a thing that we are all going to have to face and <laughs> way out of the, the, the realms of a low carb group. Although I am going to be making more offers to you as I find um, how best to serve the community in an online capacity. I may well open up another Get Started Challenge just because or, or, or do webinars or, or offer whatever online stuff that allows people to get assistance. Um, I'm almost certainly going to be opening up my premier group, which I haven't spoken about in here. And I'll be if I do that, I'll be doing that next week. Stuff like that, because staying safe, staying together whilst also being introverted and social distancing is the way that we will get through this, I personally believe. And people that are older or people that have people to care for that are older, even more, stay safe and, and like go shopping off peak when there are less people. Keep on keeping on with low carb because it's going to support your immune system so that when you do get it, it's not going to hurt as much, hopefully. You're, you're, you will be fighting fit to your body's response to killing it. And yeah, I love you all so much. And I hope that I've inspired you. Leave me comments below. Um, if you want to get into this more deeply, my, my, my let's have a chat link is up there. Um, because I know I may have either reassured or scared the crap out of you. And I'm not quite sure which right now. Because as I say, it's that balance of personal responsibility and, and not panicking versus being cautious and staying safe. And, and I, I may well have either, I'm not sure whether I've reassured you, as I say, reassured or scared the crap out of you. I'm hoping I've walked the line between the two. Um, but if you want to talk about that and also talk about how you could work with me a little bit deeper to get yourself really set up with a low carb life, the link for that is up there. 
You've also got the link up there for my Patreon. It's the tip jar of the internet. If you like what I do and you feel that you get massive value out of this group, consider slinging me a couple of quid a month just to keep this going um, because this is my job and I want to serve the community. And thank you, Paul. Thank you, Sarah. Although Paul won't watch this until after after Easter because he's, of course, on his Lent, Lent abscondment from Facebook. Um, but thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Paul, for helping me with via your Patreon contributions, because every little helps. And, and quite frankly, it's something I need right now. So consider dropping me some Patreon. As I say, if I've, if I've either reassured or scared the crap out of you and you need to talk more, my link is up there as well. Stay safe. Keep calm. Wash your hands. Practice social distancing. And I'll see you all on Wednesday for some wisdom. I'll opine about something else. If you want me to opine about something, drop me, drop me, drop me some comments below, and I can pick up a comment and opine on it further. Take care. See you all soon. Bye.